uh, this movie was amazing to see. Uh, because you usually play really strong male characters, as you're aware. John Wick, Neo, these are characters who have control. Evan did not have control at all. He tried, but he couldn't. What was it like being emasculated and vulnerable? Oh, uh, it was really fun. <laughs> Looked it. Yeah, it was really fun. But, but he has a strength in his denial. Yes, he does. You know, the girls are trying to hold up this mirror to him, saying, look, you did this with us and right. you have betrayed your family and you're you're bad. Yeah. And Evan keeps saying, No, I'm not. I helped you. You know, you did this to me. And through the whole, <laughs> the whole movie. Thing. He, to the very end. To the all way. So he just denies and denies and denies. And I thought that was really funny. It was hilarious and amazing. <laughs> and you uh, you you committed so well. It was just so great. And my how do you kind of play a character who has to remain kind of sympathetic because you're kind of the final girl. You know, you're yeah. right down to the trip at the end. When right. you tripped, I was like, yes, that is exactly what we see with girls in horror movies. So right. how, how do you kind of balance that with making a decidedly immoral choice? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's really Eli, isn't it? I mean, with yeah. the writing and, and you, know, the, the, you know, there's three writers on the film, but, you know, Eli was definitely, you know, was directing the film. And I think he's interested in that, you know? Um, there is something pathetic, deliciously pathetic mm -hmm. about Evan because he's also frustrated, right? He's trying to get some nookie right. in the morning with his wife. Yeah. The kids bring him a Father's Day cake, but then they mush it in his face, <laughs> and then he becomes a monster, <laughs> right? right? Kind of right. what's inside him, the but yeah. the monster's hungry. You know, so he's not getting his Father's Day and they're leaving. And they're his right? He's the dad. He's left holding the dog, right? He's got, you know, even the dog's still kind of. I know, of, the you know. poor little big eyed dog just So you kind of root for this guy because there's do. something. It's, he's just, he's just lonely. He's just, he, so he can't hard. figure out what he's working on. He's playing loud music. He needs to smoke weed. Yeah. And he's all a sorts of a mess, it but he's good. a good guy. He wants to be. <laughs> Ultimately, I think he wants to be. Um, it, it was a great just study in like human behavior, you know, uh, the, the musical chair scene. Um, and now you're doing your John Wick sequel, so you're back in control. Um, can but John Wick isn't in control, right? Uh, well, He's dealing with say, circumstances. Can you, can you say kind of like what he is dealing with this time around? Because he's... he's Kind of vulnerable this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's something from the past, something from the John Wick past, mm. that assassin past, that kind of comes back to haunt John. You know, I think of there's John and then there's John Wick, right? Sure. John, who loved his wife, he's got out of it, and then there's John Wick. And so something from the John Wick world, you know. As Winston said, have you thought about this to the bone? <laughs> it might come back and reach up and grab you. Well, something is coming. That is very exciting. And um, since Evan is your uh, your naive, gullible sort of dummy, are we going to have a third Bill and Ted? Can oh you just not get enough of it? Gosh, Bill and Ted. <laughs> Bill and Ted at 50, I think, is really ridiculous and could be funny. I feel like everybody would love it. I don't know. I hope so. We're trying. We can't get enough of it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.